Denise Chadwick's in the house, Soul Speaks 5D. She's been around since the early days. I would say probably 20, 20, uh, whew, what, Denise, 2017? 2017, 2018? Yeah, I think it was 2018. Yeah. It was Yukia, when you had Yukia on, and it was just before you got married. Oh, yeah, yeah, that would have been when we really kicked it up. So we had mm -hmm. like 300 and... 25 350 episodes maybe 375 mm. in uh what would have been april may of 2018 then morgan came in and said we're going to do this let's get serious so we started doing six seven eight a day for several months that was pretty wild but i think that's the period you're talking about that's when we really opened it up but uh yeah there's a lot of you know a lot to talk about um you know uh you know in your own journey uh, one of the great things about Sology for me and for Morgan has been um, we're going way back to like before even the videos were getting big, um, so, you know, like 2016, early 2017, um, watching all the connections, you know, uh, couples, uh, friendships, uh, circles, uh, other groups, um, and then also a podcast. And Denise uh, is probably at 120 by now, I would imagine, mm -hmm. um, with her podcast, which, you know, I've I've tried to assist people that want to do this uh, over the years. And I always tell them what I probably told Denise, <laughs> whatever you decide to do, just be consistent, because once you get started, and I'm sure that you probably know this, uh, after you do a few, it's kind of like uh, that's when the learning curve starts. <laughs> It's kind of, you know, you're all inspired when you started out, and, but then to actually do it week in, week out, that's a, that's a, it's a tall, it takes a lot of energy. You're a practitioner and I would uh, compare these sessions, uh, these conscious mm -hmm. conversations to, to a session because, especially now, because the energy is so palpable and, uh, and everybody of course creates that energy, but yeah, I'd like to. Talk a little bit about that. How is your, uh, for those of you who, uh, for those that don't know, uh, Denise Chadwick on YouTube and Facebook, if you catch us on live right now or on the replay, uh, why don't you tell them what the name of your podcast is? Uh, mm -hmm. And I know it's on YouTube and Facebook. I'm not sure if it's just on your page on Facebook, but yeah, just fill us in and tell us how that all came about and where you're at with it and how many episodes are you at? Yeah, so the podcast is called Love Speaks Love. And um, kind of similar, similar format to this, but I've been really quite inconsistent with it of late. Like this last year, I've been really quite inconsistent. Um, and I feel like I want it to shift direction slightly. Mm. It's always been kind of a bit of ceremony I feel when I do it, like I always start with a heart to heart connect mm. um, and bring that ceremonial aspect into it. And there's going to be one coming up soon, which is going to have more than one guest. I really like having more than one guest mm. and, you know, doing something like a bit of a weave, although that's not an essential part of it, but I do like doing that. Um, <clears throat> And the next one that's coming up, we haven't, I have three people lined up for it and it's going to be a dragon one. So I'm really excited about that. And I've been doing more weekly um, other stuff, really. And that's why I haven't been as, as consistent with, with Love Speaks Love. So it's on, I've got two YouTube channels. There's Inner Peace with Denise, which is where all the Love Speaks Loves are. And the channel that I started last year is Heartful Living with Denise. And I think I want the Heartful Living one to be a little bit more available to more people. I feel that the Inner Peace with Denise channel is a little bit more, there's lots of light language on it. It's not necessarily for people just coming into their awakening journey. I think it maybe would be a bit too out there on the woo-woo scale for mm -hmm. a lot of people. Um, so the Heartful Living with Denise channel is 
aimed a little bit more, yeah, maybe just not so, I don't know what, you, what you'd say, not let's, let's just say what I said before, not so far along the woo-woo scale. And the Heartful Living with Denise, this is what I, I think I mentioned this last time I was on, or maybe it was just, um, I, I seem like I've, I've spoken to you about it, but I know it came up in, in one of the sessions with Morgan. And so I extended my garden plot. So I rent, a, I rent a house and I rent a garden. And I extended my garden plot last year to include the summer house, which I've upgraded, uh, the pond, which I've just relined, and the garden. So I've been doing, which just makes me chuckle because I don't really know about gardening, but I've been doing kind of gardening videos for it. But it's more to do with how I work with energy in the garden. Mm. Um, and I feel that that might be a bit more of a crossover and kind of hopefully get people into looking at things a little bit differently. And I also on that one want, same within a piece with Denise, but you know, one of my focuses is, is to get people in the heart and to be working from the heart intuitively and, and making their decisions, you know, less from the head and, and more from the heart. Mm. But also the separation that we've been in or the illusion of separation in terms of being separate from nature, separate from that world, you know, the, the fairies, the dragons, all that kind of realm I want to get people like connecting to nature, hearing the voices, hearing the trees shouting and waving mm. hello at them as they walk past. Um, so that's been a big priority. And in that, um, it takes me a long time to edit the videos. I'm getting quicker. I'm finding it more enjoyable. Mm. But these bigger videos that I've done, um, there's lots of little videos being put together and it's been, you know, it's just been a bit of a process. But the gardening one that I put on, I think it almost got a thousand views, which is a lot for me. Wow. Um, and quite quickly as well. And I, I gained a few more, um, a few more subscribers from that one, but I haven't been consistent and you do need to be consistent. I'm, yeah. I'm kind of hoping that once I get those bigger videos done, that shorter ones will be a bit more forthcoming. And I've had this idea, yeah, which is a new thing. I'm, I'm not always that good at following through on the ideas and finishing them to the end. <laughs> um, but I, I listened to, someone had, had read out The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, and that was my favourite my favorite book as a child. And so I listened to that. And so I've had the idea to write a short story and read it out. And I've written two, it's been years and years and years since I've, I've got into that creative space in writing and using my imagination. And I love it. Um, so that has been dropping in a little bit to, um, to do that. And I might only do one, but I'm, I'm kind of quite excited about that. And there's not going to be that much video. It's, it's going to be maybe some some shots in, in nature um, and around here. But aside from that, it's just going to be, it's just going to be me, me reading the story out for, I don't know, half an hour, three quarters of an hour or something like that. I like that. That's really mm. cool. I used to make some back in the day in the 2016, uh, 2017, I used to make uh, a lot of <clears throat> Sology videos where uh, I would write words and then read the words uh, and then I would go put it on the production board and then I would add images and, you know, do transitions and try to capture and then put music behind it. Yeah, I think uh, we're coming to a point now where these expressions are going to start taking form. They already have. And so that's, <clears throat> to me, one of the real exciting things about uh, this network and community uh, that's being built from scratch <laughs> is that <clears throat> we've you know, the, the idea is to put everything in one place so we're not hopping from website to YouTube to Facebook to LinkedIn to Etsy, but also for content creators to be able to um, easily interface with the, the site itself 
uh, which will provide resources that will, um, you know, that will decide as a community what we'd like to do. So in other words, one of the things on the, uh, on the new template is that every page, everything is accessed from that page. Um, so there's not a bouncing around into other websites and having, you know, other tabs open, but on the, for instance, like on the live page, we foresee down the road, you know, on our long list of wishes that people, you know, like we had a show a while back, I think we picked up 22 comments. And when I went and looked at the, the task app that we used, 21 of the 22 had been already converted and updated, even on the temporary page. Uh, but like to have, to be able to go live and, and be able to put music behind you, um, animation, images right there on the spot or even produce it there and then upload it. I mean, I think this is something that we're going to see a lot of. I want to take uh, everybody to your site that you're talking about as an example. Um, here it is. So this is Heartful Living with Denise. Uh, 80 subscribers. She needs more there. She's just, this is in the early stages. So this is another uh, uh, example of so many of these new um, containers, new initiatives, 5D uh, things that are taking place. A lot of people are transitioning like Sology and like Denise is talking about. I know she probably won't let go of the other initiative, but this one seems to be um, capturing the energy of what a lot of people are finding themselves into um, in terms of like coming up with something new so here's some of the titles Heart, heartfelt gardening with light codes planting the plantain plant the cleansing energy of a storm uh, 41 seconds fey hat flowers in fey land uh, triple heart activation barefoot in the early morning sun sound healing in the form of an early morning pollen collecting bee proliferation final flight of the humble bee honoring these two humble bumbles making rose oil with extra chi i like that uh, what is this? TLC makeover of Summer House English Garden, Soothing Songbirds, Sounds, ASMR, Heartful Living with Denise. Yeah, looks good. Um, and you know, one of the things that we're finding out, I was talking to a friend yesterday, a longtime supporter, um, and, and that is the pace, you know, the pace of it all, uh, allowing the the rush, 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 you got to go do something and you got to do it this way. And, and, the, and the, the hard and fast rules of the patriarch uh, impressed upon all of us um, is fading. And it's okay to let it come when it comes. There's something about the divine timing. And, um, and it's not about quantity, right? It's about substance and quality, um, which is not rushed and, you know, kind of always on time. So I, I, I picked that up. Uh, you know, in the spirit of what you've done and your comments about kind of the transition, you know, and then what you're doing. Does that resonate with you? Do you feel like that you're turning a page? Do you feel like that, let's say, the multidimensional Denise is coming out? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, already I'm doing things that I haven't really considered, considered doing. Even little things like... Um, I had a, a long connection with Melina um, Ferguson and she taught me how she makes uh, vibrational essences. Mm. So I've made a couple of vibrational essences already. I've done a space clearing one, <clears throat> which is absolutely beautiful. Like aside from the energy, the oils that are put together uh -huh. um, are just amazing. And it's all such an intuitive process. It's like, I'm just guided how many drops I, I put in um, and just keep like having a sniff of it. Um, and the other vibrational lessons that I've done is an oral one. It's, it's one that you put under your tongue or in your water. And that's a regeneration, rejuvenation one. Mm. And that one was really interesting. When I put that in my mouthwash, and I put it in earlier in the day and I forgot about it. And then when I used my mouthwash that night, I was thinking about something else. I wasn't really focused on what I was doing but the water in the mouthwash felt like thicker and so much so that it got my attention. And then I remembered that I put the drops in earlier in the day. So that's why I put the drops in my water now. And I had a friend round and he um, 
I poured him some water and he drank some and I said oh I forgot to put the the vibrational essence in let me put some drops drops in there and after he drank it and I hadn't said anything to him he said oh it's thicker and I was like oh wow that's awesome confirmation so it just feels like it's um yeah it, it's repairing some of the damage to the new water earth, new earth plasma yeah plasma yeah it feels more like that um so yeah same it just feels like there's more of Denise here and we keep having these times when the energy is really strong when you just feel this like this difference you know either when you wake up or you might go for a little snooze or you know I, I do a lot of meditation and, and work on my body so I'm in that space a lot and it's it's just more than ever it, it just and you know five five as well goodness only knows how we'll be after after that but it's, <laughs> we're, we're gonna have to come back to that subject <laughs> <laughs> but it feels yeah. really good i just i noticed that anishka's um watching if, if you're still here i just want to give a little shout out to her because um i invited her up last year and we're almost at the end of making a video together so when I do my videos, because I live on my own and I don't have that many friends locally, I, I do all the filming myself. So it's a bit, you know, it's more challenging to do that because you've got to like set it up, do a little bit, check you're in shot, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Um, and I was noticing, and Anishka um, did something with her garden and it just this idea dropped in to invite her up to do some filming with me just so I could have a bit of a different video that's a bit more arty mm. than I would I would kind of do it um and to have a conversation with somebody as well so and one of the reasons why I got her up was because I think I mentioned this last time I was on I can see lines of energy in my garden where I've planted um the rose bushes and the other things in my garden I see lines of it I see lines in the garden that seem to connect the spots there and that reminds me you you put a you put a post up with heaps and heaps of photos mm. and one of them was like an arrow with stones mm -hmm. yeah that is almost exactly the shape of of i meant i meant to send you i'll, I'll send you these how i've planted the rose bushes in my garden i right. didn't do it as an arrow it's like a a diamond on its on its right. side like a diamond shape um but i just thought that was funny when i saw that because it's like whoa that's my garden there <laughs> well um, i think there's something to be said for that because uh one way or the other um you know i'm thinking of a, a couple of uh, women that i either talked to yesterday or, or read or, or i don't know how this goes anymore <laughs> maybe it was in dream state but they either we're talking about separately uh and you can relate to this um they were talking about the work they've been doing oh one of them i remember now one of them was saying how she has a 3d job and she goes into that job every day it's a very people oriented she's very much a point person on the on the contact of the people as they come into the establishment and uh she was saying how a lady came in or the, the regular customer who comes in now this is in a big big city uh in the in the u.s and uh and the lady comes in and she, um, what i kind of picked up from it is the lady would come in kind of kind of it's a service oriented salon type place and uh you know from the hustle and the bustle and as she comes in she looks at our friend i'll just say who it is delia flores and delia will I guess kind of make eye contact with like the lady will look to make eye contact with her like look to take her essence in and said something to her like um, um wow you i just needed to look at you and will kind of land and so she was talking about that and she said uh, well of course this is what i do i do everywhere i go i do energy work and so many of you have been doing that uh, and for so long and so i look at this gardening thing and then the geometry of it, right? Um, 
you know, that's the masculine and the feminine, right? I mean, the, the, the feminine is, I'm going to create this, I'm going to set the pace or weave into this new grid, um, you know, become one with it, merge with it through these, these actions, these, these conscious actions that, uh, that's what we're doing. We're, we're anchoring in, I guess you could say anchoring in the plasma through the construction, um, of, of the new grid through our efforts, which is the, you know, the, the structure, um, that the masculine energy brings. So I think we'll see a lot of these things. And I think that this, the, the, I feel that the, uh, two things, one, the, these little efforts <laughs> that we do, you know, that don't really fit in with the old world, like, Oh, how does that kind of impact the world that you're, you're building this garden or this, this energetic uh, centre, you know, in in uh, in your own little thing. What's that going to do? Well, I think that's that's the loudest thing you can do um, is to, you know, is to uh, uh, take personal uh, initiation, initiative, and effort um, to to apply yourself. Um, so, like, and then I think the other thing that that's happening. I feel the other thing that's happening, or know the other thing that's happening, really is that people uh, like yourself, so many people on this, in this community uh, and that, that are coming, um, they're going to be seen in a whole different way now. They're not going to be seen like weirdos and crazy people. And I believe the same is going to happen with the autistic, you know, the ones on the spectrum, Asperger's, ADHD. These are human beings that were seen as lesser than uh, by society uh, and by the establishment, when in fact they are actually carrying the communication bandwidth of of both the three. You could say uh, more so of the five D, uh, and they're actually doing the same as you're doing with your garden. If we'll just get the hell out of their way, and and then we will, and start to see them for what they are and the offerings that they have and the vision. And, and coding that they have. So I think this is big work that you're doing, even with the, uh, you know, with the intention of bringing in the elemental world to the world. Like you can't dismiss that. Uh, you might do two or three things like Tim Smith over in Sedona. I stayed at his place and, you know, he's all elemental like you. And, and next thing you know, he's filming fairies. I mean, the world's going to see that this is going on all over the place and always has been, right? Indeed, yeah. It's one of the um, one of the things I've been doing in the in the garden recently is I've relined the pond because the water was really murky, and it just struck me that the water there, in some ways, as I was like clearing it and getting the water clean that in some way like when I pull the weeds out of the garden it's like pulling the weeds out of my body mm. it's like pulling the old programs out of my body some of them are really deep rooted you've got to get right in there and, and get to the root others you pull one out and you know other bits kind of come with it um but the the pond it struck me it's almost shaped like a womb and it feels like in the cleansing of the waters of the pond, I've really cleansed the waters of my womb space. And it's really beautiful there. I was given, I was given this water feature by one of the neighbours. Um, and it just looks really schmick now. And it's, it's all healthy and vibrant. And it's got this beautiful ecosystem. And when the sun starts to go down and it's in that in-between time, I can see the energy over the water. I can see the energy of the water. Um, and I just feel the fairies in particular in the garden are really happy with what I've done there. And I'm, you know, it, it didn't really occur to me that I was doing this for me as well, but I just love sitting by the pond and looking in, seeing the snails that I've bought munching on the algae. And I just get so much from having nature right there and being in nature it just feeds me so much yeah it's like revisiting 
right? Because I, I, I remember uh, as a kid, you know, not growing up in the country or anything, but but in developing, let's say, a developing town or suburb. And uh, so many times I could find these places where you, you it might be like, behind a, a you know a bunch of trees or something just a small little place or a little creek or uh and and i can and, and i can remember just having this innate uh thing with the with the lichen and the algae and the water and the little and you could almost like you enter that world but now you know that it's gotten to this point and actually some of this has to do with the channel that we did last night or the session we did last night where after the session i turned the thing off <laughs> and then i started because she's like do you have anything to say and i'm like no <laughs> i can't say anything right now it's all coming in so fast but when i got off of it uh, i said well this is what was happening then all the intel came out it was very much like a fem feminine flow which i'm not used to which i guess is part of what's happened for all of us is we're, we're tapping into both sides but uh but it had to do with and again that the the information was coming in so rapidly with images and video and you know and but as i started to spit it out it was basically kind of something like this it reminded me of of what i was just telling you and really what you're doing and it was um we it was showing me us walking throughout the world in the past and at the same time in the present uh and as we're walking through these areas that the memories of the experience would come back, which which is what this reminded me of, as we were talking, you were talking about it today, and, and it reminded me of when I was a kid last night and today, where I would go into these little spaces, these little sanctuaries, and have memories, you know, have memories of the peace and the water flowing, and not necessarily, you know, I was Napoleon or I was Genghis Khan or what, but picking up the 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 experience of the human incarnation in that moment or moments in the past. And at the same time, uh, weaving in all that is, all that I am into the new grid, creating a new experience, creating the new coding. So it's like, for me, I look at what you're doing in that garden and you're taking everything that you know and that you are, and you're basically, uh, in my in my opinion uh you are merging with the external and you're you're expanding both as a result true a true transmission true coding is shareable and that's what you're doing which is which is i think a reflection of what we're all kind of one of the things we're all kind of aligning with are you getting uh we could talk about the last two months <laughs> but we're and we're we're gonna cut we were definitely going to talk about this uh this uh bookend that's coming up with the uh with the eclipses but you know this year obviously has been different are you are you hearing any particular part of your makeup or your aspects louder now are you hearing any different messages it's definitely louder um, and it's, it's been loud for a while, but it, you know, I didn't even really consider that it might get louder, but it, but it is, um, messages for humanity, not so much. My inner work tends to be focused on the body. Mm -hmm. So the messages for me tend to be kind of body related. Um, so. I went for a long walk yesterday, the first long walk that I've done. I think I only went for a walk once in winter. Mm. So yesterday was the first walk that I've done for ages and it was a good four hour. I mean, I walk a lot and I sit a lot. So I say four hour walk, I probably spent an hour of, <laughs> of that sitting down, but it was the longest walk that I've done for ages. I'm up and down hills and I can feel a difference in my body. And you mentioned this, that you went for a, a was it a 12 mile walk and you, you mm -hmm. felt fine afterwards? Yeah. Felt really sick for that. And even going up the hills, it just wasn't quite as much of a of a strain as mm. it would have been. And I definitely 
I'm not seeing things visibly of my body improving, but for example, yesterday on the walk, I didn't have as much pain in my body. And this has been for a couple of years that Mm. this consistently just seems to be improving. Um, The inflammation in my body, although not visible yet, feels like on the inside, it's getting less. Mm -hmm. Um, I had something going on last week where my my belly was like really just going through it um I thought I'd, I thought I'd got a tummy bug and I haven't had a bug I was thinking it was like 2007 the last time I had like a tummy bug um so I just decided to go to bed sorry that's next door's door um mm-hmm. I just decided to go to bed early um and just do some energy work on myself and and tune in and you know ask for any ask for any guidance and what my higher self said to me was if I told you you were actually improving would you believe me and at that moment I just laughed my head off at that because I was feeling pretty like Mm. pretty unwell at that moment (laughs) and that kind of like snapped me out of it a little bit um so I, I feel that we may not be seeing it yet yeah. and we've been hearing this for a long time that illness is going to be a thing of the the past you know ill health and I've, I've been working on the health of my body for for more than 20 years mm. but I am starting to see improvements in that you know it feels a bit like finally I'm starting to see improvements um and the message when I, when I went to stay in, in Whitby um, for, my, for my birthday a couple of weeks ago, I was just walking down the beach and I was told really clearly, stand on that rock. So there was a rock sticking out of the ground about that much. And they're like, put both feet on the rock. I'm like, okay, whatever. And I'm looking out to sea and then, then they said, turn around. And I turned around and then they went, I heard like, walk. And so I walked in this, it was a really straight line. And I'm like, oh, this is interesting. And I looked up and the church of St. Mary's, which is on multiple ley lines and would have been on a pagan site, um, was directly, I was in a direct line with that, with with one of the corners of it. And I thought, oh, that's really interesting. But it was just so clear. And it's it's like your head is turned one way and you're like, why am I looking here? Okay. Now I get it. it. It's just so, so crystal clear. Um, and then I was told to sit on these on these rocks and I'm looking out to see and I can feel so much energy coming through. And this particular beach is a bit weird. There's two piers. Um, and one of them was it blocks your, your view of the of the sea. But what I realized was that this line was should have been going straight through that pier. But when they built the pier, it must have done something to the energy line. And that was what I was working with. It was kind of repairing that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And in the morning, I'd because it was my birthday, I decided to go on a pirate ship and just go like round the bay. A pirate ship? A pirate ship. How yeah. cool is that? I know, it was awesome. So I realized that when I was on the ship, I was doing energy on the and energy work on the other side of the pier. Um, and that would have been the way it was it was almost like tying two things together it's like I dropped something into the sea when I was in the boat and then me being on the other side it kind of like tied it all together so that line was a bit freer Mm. Um, I want to show this this stone so yesterday when I went out for a walk it was like look down at the ground and there was this so it's it's Jurassic round here. So all of those are fossils. Holy crap. I know. And the shape of it as well. Like it's such an unusual Where in shape. the hell did you find that? Just in the woods. I mean, look at that. It looks like light language in, in, in a hieroglyph and glyphs. Look at that. Yeah. That's that's like uh holy of the holies, man. I mean, look so at all that. these little lines, that's exactly, it's, it's light, light language. And the bits that are sticking out, like those are, those are old, old beings, but the it's energy. Like stories. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, and it that holds can... holds yeah. so much coding. Yeah, it's like and... it's a, it's like a book. It's like not even like a book. It's more like a volume of books, right? Yeah, like a series. Wow. Yeah, it's Look just holy amazing. shiitake mushrooms. And even from this angle, it looks like a bean. It looks like a an animal yeah. bean or. Wow, that's just like, whoa. Are those out there like that? Or is that like a unique piece? Look at that, it's got an eye. If you keep turning it, and there's a face on the back. <laughs> and then there's an eye here. Uh, fascinating. That's absolutely fascinating. Do you realize how many, how many, how much, I mean, that's basically an energy complex. That'd be like, you know, the, the, you know, like a council of nine coming to you from another planet or another multiverse or, I mean, there, there's so much there, so much, so much information there. I find it fascinating. And do you know what's funny? I feel like I've molded, I've been molding this piece of rock for years because, let's see if I can do this. Here, let me put you back up. Let's I put see. my hand there and it just seems to fit perfectly yeah. Yeah. around there. And then I put my thumb in that little yeah. thing, there, and that just fits there perfectly. I, I, you left it there. You've left it there. I had an experience uh, in Arkansas in 2016 uh, when I first hit the road, and um, and I went to this uh, to this mountain near where we had the soldier fest, and um, my friend took me. And I got out, of, we were going up the mountain, you had to go up this dirt road. It was a swimming hole that very few people knew about. And um, and as we're almost getting to the swimming hole, I'd never been there. I heard, get out of the car and go find the divinity rock. I'm like, what the hell is that? So I went out there and start looking and I found this black elongated rock. And it was the same thing. It fit my hand. It had four faces. And each face, it would there would be a spot where it would fit. And and my, you know, my intel in regard to my own truth, I guess you would say, you know, come bringing it back to what what's happened here, what you're showing us, is that I had left it there. I had left it there and uh ended up doing a ceremony. I come back a year later, the first time Morgan came, and we ended up in the same spot, and same thing happened. We're coming up the, the road and I'm told, go get the other one now. And <laughs> so I'm like, what? So I went and I found a white one, like an off-white one that was the complement to the black one. Same thing. So I, I think, I think I feel that in some way you left that there. Almost like a, I don't want to say a remote control, but a technology that when you found it you activate it even by putting your finger and your thumb, you know what I mean? And, and discovering that and connecting the dots. It's like those Stargate things where you put your hand on the, mm. I mean, yes. it's your energy to really yeah. rather than your hand, but it's, it's a similar thing. Mm. When I was in, I may as well, as soon as I'm getting yeah, in see. the stones out, I'll show you this one. So, on my birthday, and I'd had a bit of a moment in Whitby because I'd wanted to go to Glastonbury and it felt like an uphill. It just it wasn't flowing to go to Glastonbury, so I decided to go to Whitby instead, and I was really happy about that. But mm. my birthday, it was rainy, it was windy, it was sunny in the morning, it was all weathers, and I had a bit of a moment when I had to go back to the apartment because it was raining too much. And I was like, why am I here? I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> um, just, you know, just releasing. And then I went to the beach and there's this beautiful beach. Oh, the, um, the post that I sent you with the, um, with the, with the dragon portal. Um, so I couldn't quite get to that beach because the tide was too high, but I was directed to this rock. And again, <laughs> looked down at the ground and you can see you can oh, see wow. that there's a bit of a spiral there. You can see that, that there's uh -huh. like a bit of an ammonite. So yeah. there's lots of ammonites there. And it's people like, a, like, what is that? Like a, a single, uh, it's a, it looks like a vertebrae species though. Is that a vertebrae? No, it's not. 
I'll, I'll show you in a sec, but even these markings on the outside are just interesting. Uh -huh. So I, I smashed the rock. People smashed them with hammers, but I didn't have a hammer. Uh -huh. So I smashed the rock. into two halves. Wow. So that's an ammonite. It's like a spiral. Oh, I see what you're saying now. Okay. Wow. It almost what? looks like a uh, like a sun disk. Uh, mm. Or, yeah. Definitely a spiral, though. I can see it. And those are probably, the sparkly bits is probably calcite. Hmm. And the other half of it, so it's split in the middle. But they look like dragon's eyes to me as well. Like that there's bit just, there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, there's just a whole lot going on there. <laughs> like you said, even with the other markings. Yeah. Yeah, so that was my birthday present from the dragons, I think. It's really heavy. I was like, so I've taken photos. Do I just leave this here? Because it's a bit heavy to be carrying around, but no. You have to take it with you. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah, so the dragons. The dragons. Let's talk about the dragons. What's going on? Yeah, you mentioned that to me when uh, I reached out to you um, to come on. Um, I'm trying to think of uh before we jump into it like i'm just trying to think of i haven't i have haven't heard a lot about dragons so far in 2023 although there's been a couple of our sessions there was one in particular where um it felt like a you know have you ever felt like you kind of been sucked into a portal or a wormhole you know, and you're just like, Shh, okay, it was the opposite of that. So instead of going thrust into the wormhole, the wormhole, this picture like a cone coming out from my navel, and it sucked into my, it's like the wormhole came into me. And there was a lot of intel with it, like, you know, the umbilical cord never left you, and then the mother came back in or whatever. But when, when that happened, a bunch of things happened to my body, but I remember specifically feeling this fire and it came up through the navel you know and into the sacral into the solar and then it went like this you know out into the you know the throat and came out and it felt like fire and it felt like dragon you know and that was probably about two three weeks ago so when did the dragons start showing themselves and what do they have to say <laughs> um the last few months but particularly the last few weeks I can't remember exactly mm. um but when I was staying in Whitby so one time when I stayed in Glastonbury I was in a an a b and b at the base of the tour it was it was one of the nights that you did one of your your things actually um when you and Morgan did did something I think this was it was around the time that Franco transitioned. It was that October, I think. Mm. It might have been another time. Um, that sounds right. Yeah. And the energy, because the, the tour was behind me. So this B&B is at the base of the tour. And so basically I'm sleeping on the tour. And I could hardly sleep because the energy was like banging into my back pretty much. It was so, so strong. So this place that I stayed in Whitby is on a hill. And it's where the cliffs are and where the St. Mary's churches that I mentioned and the Abbey. But as I was trying to go to sleep, it felt the same. It was like the energy was so strong. It was pulsing into my body and it felt really similar to the tour in Glastonbury. Mm. And as I was trying to get to sleep, I was kind of in that meditation space. I wouldn't say I was in the space between because I was still quite wired. I didn't feel that close to sleep but I felt in the meditation space and I was shown into the hill and it was full of dragons, like just full of dragons. And I would say hundreds of really? dragons. 
if not thousands of dragons. Wow, I've never seen that. I've never seen more than like 12. I know. I it can't was, imagine seeing a field of dragons. Wow, were they all different colors? Yeah, and some were in stasis and some were awake. Um, it was, really? um, and I'd been in the midst of doing a dragon immersion. So I've done two dragon immersion gatherings, um, both of three, three gatherings each now one. What, now, what is that, a dragon immersion? It's just where you're fully immersed in dragon energy, basically. Okay. So, so you basically uh, just clear the deck and say, let's all in, uh, uh, intend to to align or feel into the dragon energy. Yeah. yeah. And and each one was one of the elements. So we started with um, with earth and then we did air and then water. So they were the first three. And the last three were fire, ether and um, all of the elements for the, for the last one. And so this was before, before the last three. I think I'd, I knew, I think I'd been shown the fire one, but the ether one, I haven't been shown what we were doing for that yet. Um, now there was a bath at this apartment and I don't have a bath, so I had a bath every night. And the second night, and something major happened each night that I was, I was in the bath. But the second night, what happened was I was taken into the, to the cliff. And it was weird because as soon as I kind of went through, I became one of my dragon aspects. But I also could see that that dragon aspect was still in stasis. So I had to like wake the dragon up, even though I kind of was the dragon. It, it was this weird, weird thing but I knew that there were many other people with me. And so that became the ether one. So in visualization, we went to that spot and everybody connected with their dragon and merged with the dragon if, if they wanted to merge with the dragon, but basically took that dragon out of stasis. And what happened when we did that was that all the other dragons that were in stasis woke up. It was like a, like a, um, almost like a time lock. I, I, I haven't yeah. got the word for it, but it, yeah. it was like that signature of doing that with a few of us there together doing it in a frequency that was high enough, therefore, to awaken, to send that ripple out and awaken all the dragons there, which then sent another ripple out to the ether dragons. And then the ether dragons came and I call them like weavers they felt like dra actual dragon weavers that were then weaving ether plasma crystalline energy into our energy field like weaving with us um so if there were any repairs that needed doing to the electrics or whatever of your electromagnetic field that that was happening but it felt like it felt like it was activating <clears throat> another layer of our energy whether that is another layer of the geometry, I'm not quite sure how that works, but that was that was what we did. And I've, I've just, because the dragons really seem to be calling and a few people at the same time, um, I've, I've, and this made me laugh because I've really not been on Facebook very much and I had a whole, a whole more than a month off Facebook in December to January. Um, but I, I was guided to to create a Facebook group, which is a dragon and rose immersion. It's called. Mm -hmm. So it's not specific to the gatherings that I'm doing, but it's just a place to be immersed in dragon energy or rose energy. And I was just going to have it as dragon energy to start with, um, just dragon immersion. And then I, I got to add the rose. And I wasn't sure if that was weird putting the dragon and rose together, but they actually feel like they go together really well. And um, Kristen Kanzler reminded me that the rose is your aura and the dragon lines are your energy lines. So actually the rose and the dragon go really well together. And I feel the sisterhood of the rose, that, that lineage, were fully working with the dragons. Like, you know, the two were, were really together. Wow. That makes sense. That feels right to me. Um... I love those pictures, those images, and you'll see like a priestess or a princess, and she'll be, you know, uh, exuding that femininity, that 
divine femininity and then there'll be this big ass dragon who could just you know basically <laughs> consumer in one bite you know like a <laughs> peanut and he's just tamed like devotion i just see like devotion and uh service and love and you know like the, i don't know it's just always I, lo I love those pictures um but yeah that would make sense to me like like the 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 uh uh alliance that you would never think of you know to to think of a well like uh what is it uh what is that game of thrones you know <laughs> i love that scene where like they think they're gonna kick her ass and she's like they got all that whole armies there and that dragon comes she's a little bit too ferocious <laughs> I haven't watched Game of Thrones. I I I I didn't watch it till like years later, but uh, yeah, I'm not much for being able to watch a whole series unless it's Outlander. But, I uh, heard it like people I've lived with have been watching mm -hmm. it, so I've I've heard the constant swords clashing. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, I think uh, even like your experience with uh, you know going into uh, the cliff. I mean, because obviously you know you carry the you know what we see you carry you know the feminine you carry the the ancient priestess connection you carry the rose sister of the rose you carry the elemental the phase uh, you know avalon i mean you carry and uh and then your relation with the dragons and i think of you i think of uh you know like marita uh Gayatri, uh, so many, so many, uh, you know, sisters that uh, you can you you can feel it in them. And there's Gayatri, and then there's another there's another lady sister, and I can't think of who it is right now. Both of them start, and I believe maybe Marita too, <laughs> but they start downloading from the dragon energy. You know, a yay number of years ago. Uh, all of a sudden start painting them and you know what I mean so like there's something really really um I don't know what the word is but like I can't imagine one part of us birthing this whole experience on earth you know you know Franco talked about the the serpent race a lot of people have talked about that you know in some of the sacred texts which would kind of make sense, you know, as architects of the this part of the the universe, uh, in that they are in, um, androgynous. The serpent is wise, uh, but also the you know the uh, uh, you know the derivatives of that uh, reptilian uh, dragon, uh, you know, like like it's all coming back to full circle. And, and and you mentioned weavers. Uh, I just, I don't know. I've always had the strong impression that the dragon energies of us were the ones that created, almost like constructed, right? Within the plasma of the idea, you know. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Sadia. That's who I was trying to think of, Sadia as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I created the lines. Yeah, Sadi has got something on on um, Friday for the five five, a dragon. The, oh my God, the five five. Yeah, what well, is the dragon related to the five five? Yeah, <laughs> here comes um, the dragon. Yeah. <laughs> fire, baby, fire. Mm. Uh, yeah, something I I wanted to to mention because this might be helpful for people. So when I've been working with my body recently, I found. So I'm still working a lot with my fascia. I, st I still feel that everything in my body is fascia related. I've been working with my lymph um, as well. And then I realized that lymph is kind of controlled by the fascia. It's the fascia that surrounds the lymph. So even though I thought that might be a separate thing, the lymph is not, it's still fascia. And someone that I was watching on YouTube, um, Alicia Celeste, mm -hmm. um, and she's not putting videos out anymore, but she's still got her old stock of videos there. And something that she said really struck home with me. And it's about, in her experience, people with fibromyalgia um, have suppressed their feelings and emotions. 
and that's why it's still in their body so I've worked with my body for, for years releasing energy releasing energy and she suggested in one of the videos that you need to actually express what you're feeling so when I've got a pain in my body and I'm working with that pain and I've for, for a long time I've asked that part of my body like what are you showing me but instead now I'm I'm going, what am I feeling there? And I'm just vocalizing random words that come out. Some of them are even made up words. It's weird, but I just need to say them. And that is, I'm finding that amazing for releasing stuff. Um, and I'm also, so say it, if it's my knee, instead of saying my knee is feeling, which actually puts separation, mm. I'm saying I am feeling like mm. I'm feeling it in my knee, but I realized that there was a bit of separation going on there and that I need to say, I am feeling and just let these random words just come out, you know? Mm. And, and it's interesting, you start to see patterns. So one of the ones, one of the words that was like, oh, that one runs deep was I am unlovable. Like that's a deep one. But I am words, what? What did you say? I am what? Un, unlovable. Wow. You wow. But I <laughs> but I can feel it's almost like a reverse psychology on the subconscious. You know what I mean? Because you would you would you hear I am living abundance, I am positive, I am, you know, all these positive affirmations, but I am unlovable. And it's not um, being said, it's just no, I get it. Yeah. Yeah, that feeling is just trapped in my in my body somewhere. Yeah. So if that feeling's in my body somewhere the expression of it releases it therefore i can stop you know working from that from that program truth that's a truth yeah so actually because i i feel that that's part of what's happening right now too is that we're realizing that we don't have to pull up the shadows through the unconscious uh uh ways that they came out all these years now we're starting to go not only are we conscious creators but we can also look for these shadows in other ways that are less painful by looking at, at them from a different perspective because our perspective was shaded by the the way that we got to know them and now we can look at them and go let me go find one of these so i'm going to tell my my essence my my subconscious conscious super con everything i'm going to say hey i am unlovable I feel unlovable and what, and then what that brings up just, yeah, I like this idea. And, and, and it makes sense to me because that's what happens. And this has become very obvious now that, that we, we, you know, how many times over the last two years have we gone, man, I thought I was done with that shit. <laughs> and then it comes back. Why is this here? But it's actually just coming to be released. That's it. It's not coming to, 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 hold you down or handicap you or weigh you down anymore it, it, that was just a uh, our perception because of how we got to know these things mostly in triggering each other and externalizing on each other but now it's a little bit different so uh, I, I, I like this method a lot thank you i found when i was walking as well so the the fascia in my left foot often like goes <laughs> as I'm walking and I usually have to stop and stretch it and maybe massage it a bit. But I was just asking it instead, like, what's in there? What, what, are, what are you feeling? What am I feeling in, in my foot? And so I'm just walking and, and saying the words and just found that it, it opened up on its own. Like I'm, I'm finding it really powerful. And you see some patterns in the words, like some like, um, I feel unlovable was, was a big one. I've, I haven't had that in many parts of my body but it was a big, deep one, that one. But other ones like, I feel lost, or if, let me just say, I'm feeling, because I feel is almost like too complete. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling feels transient. Um, I'm feeling trapped was a big one. Mm. I'm feeling trapped. So when you see, and this can be in different parts of the body, you know, I'm feeling grief or whatever, but when you're finding that the same words are coming out a lot, in different parts of the body that feels like another kind of deep deep measure so what do you, so what do, you do you you sit quietly and say uh, we'll just use this example sit quietly 
uh, in silence and say, uh, I feel unlovable. And then just feel where it shows up in the body. Or do you go to say my leg or an area where I've had arthritic uh, pain uh, and I say different things to figure out what that's rooted in? That's It's not really trying things. It's just letting it's just letting the words flow. So I'm not consciously thinking, where is the unlovable in, in my body? So I might be working on um, my shoulder, for example. Mm. Um, there might be some pain in there, the fascia might be contracted. Um, so then I'll ask my shoulder, what's in there? What are you feeling? And then the words just start pouring out. Mm. I'm feeling trapped. I'm feeling, what was the word? Contacted or it was it was like a made up made up word what was it contoctrid I can't even remember what it was now but it didn't make sense but it was like when I fell into the word even though it was like a new word that I just made up it was like I'm feeling constricted I'm feeling like it was a mixture of a, of a few words kind of coming together mm. so I just let my body go there and just let out whatever is whatever is in there and then, because I'm feeling the energy of, of the part of my body that I'm working on, as soon as I start releasing the words of the emotion, the feeling that's trapped in there, um, the energy just starts flowing straight away because my hands are there feeling the energy and just the act of expressing those. And it's not always emotions, like it can be grief or mm. it can be things like, oh let me see if I can find an example I've just a feeling of being so oh that's not the right thing not an emotion as such but just the feeling of like, uh, confused um, yeah uh, or sometimes it's not even a word right you just have like this yeah uh, hey I, I'm yeah. feeling like I'm pressed down I'm feeling mm. like I'm being held or Whatever mm. it is, I'm, I'm not kind of vetting it. And I've only been doing this a few days, so I'm still kind of learning with it. So really, really just sitting quietly. I'm just picturing this like for myself, like sitting quietly uh, and then just saying things like this and then not even looking for where it's coming from or just saying it itself, mm. just saying the things itself. Uh, wow, this is powerful. This is powerful, like, like, you know, I am a perpetrator. I am a perpetrator, you know, like sitting with things and just, I don't see how you can go wrong with it. Cause on one hand, uh, it's affirming. And on the second, it's, uh, you know, it's, it, it's calling it up, calling it forth, summoning it, summoning, summoning it, mm. you know, mm. Yeah, it's been powerful. I like when you when you suddenly get a new practice like that and you find it really shifting things deeply. Yeah. Mm. So you feel like connecting to the dragons? Oh. Or something? What Just before think? I... Hmm? Yeah, I think that would be amazing. Yeah. Just before I do, it's almost like channeling when you're feeling the words coming out. And sometimes you might get like, you can feel a word trying to come through and you, you just let it speak itself out, if that makes sense. And if I find a better way of explaining this, because it's still quite new to me, then I'll, um, I'll do a video on it or something. I think it'll show itself here mm. for some reason. Yeah, I feel I feel like this. Uh, I can see it now. Like ever since you said that, the uh, hundreds and thousands of dragons in the cliff. I can almost see like a. a it reminds me of uh, the first Sology Fest in that tent, and uh, it had this like the you know the Sedona red dirt or red clay. You know, there was some there was some uh, carpet down, but there was where I was sitting there, and Franco was talking. Um, and he just started talking the first day and in front of me was, uh, like all that red clay, like, you know, that wasn't covered. And all I could see was on the foundation or what you would call the floor or the ground was all of these, uh, different, uh, 
star family, you know, reptilians and Pleiadians and Arturi Arturians. And so I'm looking like now and I just see this field of dragons, like all multi all different colors. Bless you. Which is which is cool. Thank you. <laughs> ah. <clears throat> Oh, I'm, I'm, so it isn't absolutely definite, but I'm just being nudged to share this. So the dragon special of Love Speaks Love that I want to do looks like at the moment it's going to be Sadia, um, Zahara and Marion Hobbs. So, yeah, that should be a, a little a little powerhouse of a of a weave. Oh, that's all right with everybody mentioning that, but I just got a nudge to um to say that. Well, something's going on because when I start sneezing like that, that's what I love about uh, this this uh, new uh, grid that we're walking on, or you know, like uh, in the in in you know the micro, uh, you know, the mo like like solitude, like this, like this show, like this moment right now. It's like we're like um we should talk about it we talked about it all those years you know the feminine's rising and the feminine qualities and the masculine qualities and christ consciousness and sacred sexuality and all of this stuff right and like now we're 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 not talking about it we're, do, we're actually doing it we're not we're not like even framing things up or uh preconditioning or uh, qualifying, pre-qualifying things. We're just doing it, going with it. Big energy. Should we do something with the dragon? I, I believe we should. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so I'll just invite everybody into their heart space. First of all, breathing love and just expanding our hearts, releasing any energy that's ready to leave our bodies that is not of that love essence. So I'm seeing some really massive dragons. I'm seeing big dragons and they're tiny compared to these massive dragons that are coming in. I don't know if this is still the ether, ether dragons. And I just invite anybody that's watching to, if you feel to, just close your eyes so you have your own experience in this. And what I share, it may be different for you. And I'm going to share some light language. <clears throat> Before that, I'm being shown, oh, these dragons are huge. They're like almost as big as the planet. And I'm seeing them in a ring around the planet. And so it's like they're together in a ring kind of flying round. And there's one at the top at the North Pole and there's one at the, at the South Pole. And I see them coming up out of the waters. And I see them kind of coming, so some are coming up from Earth and some are coming down to Earth. And I invite anybody just to open up to a message that might come in for you from this and, and maybe afterwards just get a pen and paper or tune in afterwards and just see if, start writing whatever words come through. 
So just sitting with that feeling wherever you are. Just allowing whatever wishes to come up to come up and be released. And just bringing our awareness back to our heart space. Feeling that connection with the new earth templates. And just feeling our presence in our bodies, fully connected to the earth, fully anchored. Moving our bodies in any way that feels right. And if your eyes are closed, just opening them whenever you're ready. Thank you. <laughs> That was like a, mm. go ahead, what'd you get? I was just going to say that was a new frequency that, that hasn't quite come in before, I don't think. Well, what I, were you going to say about it? Well, something, uh, I don't know, like a purging or a cleansing in the, up, up in here. But I mean, that's what it, what happened with me. I've never experienced anything like that. <laughs> it was like, this isn't, the, I felt the energy come in and I could see them. And then I just felt this whole kind of like a I don't know like a you know we have clearings in our chakras and our 
you know, and like you were talking about, it seems like the physical transformation is evidentary, you know, within ourselves. We can't like put our finger on it because we can't see it. And we've yet to really see it on the outside so much. Um, but it's the same thing. It felt like uh, something cleared, I guess you would say, in the in the biology of it, like the sinus cavity, the, you know, the airways, passages, uh, but even more so, like, um, I don't know if it's the fascia, you know, but mm -hmm. like at the end of whatever it might be, a nerve, a muscle, uh, a passageway, like little little what do they call them? microchondria or something but anyway mm -hmm. we're all the way to the last element at the end of the road uh cleared out and uh, like some type of greater capacity of breath and what that represents on an energetic level but it's it's embodied or you know and i've never felt that which is kind of cool nice <clears throat> Yeah, I, I got towards the end that um, <clears throat> that this might be something to do with creativity as well, whether that's just for me, um, but for people to be kind of open to creative ideas coming in and it might be new creations, things that we haven't really done before. Yeah. And when you said about the fascia, it struck me that the fascia lines are kind of like the dragon lines, aren't they? I've never... I've never really uh, researched or studied fascia. I'm only familiar with it with a couple of people talking about it, but mostly because of uh, one or two shows that we've done where you, you actually introduced me to it. And as I understand it, uh, and, and let me connect it back to the, uh, what were you talking about? Um, uh, not uh, not Lyme's disease, but the uh, fiber, um, fibromyalgia, how you say that? Fibromyalgia. Yeah. Because I noticed this years ago when I first woke up um, and I was given the intel, uh, the intel, I didn't know why, but um, if I look at a lot of the people that I interacted with of what I would both call, well, I would call them all, uh, you know, swimming in the same waters we are, no matter what level of shadow was obvious or not. And I can look at, like, say, one person back in 2012, and she was very, very, uh, uh, like many of us had had lived a hard life and, and uh, addictions and et cetera, et cetera, uh, had severe fibromyalgia. Now, I, I don't speak to this person, you know, like, like a, you know, even like, you know, us touching base on the message now and then, uh, no, nothing, nothing bad ever happened. But I do notice them on social media now and then because uh, they're actually friends of my my son and uh, and and I notice the the they've been freed up over the years you can see they're moving more you know they're moving more uh, flexible uh, but then uh, then on the other end of the spectrum I look at Franco because a lot of these uh, I've noticed that in many cases Lyme's disease uh, seems to be uh, you know Kristen Van Bissett, um there's another one. Um, it seems to be something that you see and behind it, you see a Frank or you see a Kristen or you know what I mean? Um, and so like when you said trapped, like a trapped emotions, I mean, some of these people so high frequency, so, you know, so connected. Um, you even wonder how the hell did they make it in this world? But uh, yeah. Because I remember talking to, to Franco, you know, in the last year, uh, and it would be, well, I remember he came on one day, and he talked about how um, just in that last year of his life, how he had found out that he had, he found a mask that he had developed since I think the age of five or six years old, where he would put this mask on. Because obviously he was already telling his parents like, hey, you know, I'm from another planet. <laughs> I can do you know, all this stuff. And they're like, hey, you know, get back, get back. So he was like many of us so sensitive to conflict and turmoil and anything other than a heart open environment. It was very painful. And that he put that on, you know, he, he, uh, he had discovered it. We were having a conversation on the show. So something he had been going through. 
And then I look at him shortly thereafter coming to Sedona uh, for the first Sology Fest, and he was just vibrant. I mean, he was, and, and everyone knows, you know, he was by human standards, he shouldn't have been living. I think four of his organs were like less than 25%. His heart shouldn't have been, you know, functioning. But yeah, that just shows the power of uh, uh, releasing those those concentrated, um, deeply concentrated uh, blockages or, you know, shadows or whatever you want to call them. But I, I don't know about you, but I, I look at like what you just took us through and the story about the tour and the presence of the dragons, kind of like we, we were here at the beginning, now we're here at the end. And the, what they represent in terms of the no bullshit, you know, we're going to get to work and, and kind of like Cali, we're going to, we're going to burn, the, we're going to purify and the fires of uh, the heavenly fires or whatever. Um, but I don't know about you, but uh, I know it was certainly in, in, uh, in, these, in, in this uh, eclipse corridor, the beginning of it anyway. <laughs> We don't know. We still got a couple of days here, so we're going to be careful about what we say. But, but deep, deep rooted, deep, mm -hmm. deep rooted uh, uh, shadow or suppressed emotions. I think that's what it is. And and then going back to what you're saying too about speaking something. Mm -hmm. So as a as a like a concluding example, um, we're doing a session two sessions back, and at the end of the session. Morgan's kind of like in reverence for the masculine and then makes this comment about being a bull at the gate. And it just struck me like I was in this space, you know, and, and, and clearing all this stuff over the last few days, like so many people. And all of a sudden, I feel this pain at the end of this fabulous session. And it looks like a, a it looks like a, a like a triangle. Like, a, I guess the female triangle, because it would be like that, right? And actually, like where the yoni fits, right? Like, like kind of like that. It was in me. And I see it, and it's black, and it's ugly, and it doesn't feel good. And all of a sudden, it breaks up. And it was crazy, because it felt like something was invading my body. And then as it went up through my channels, then I started to realize it was a part of me. And it was just going back home into the different parts of the body. Now, the reason I, I bring that up is because um, it's like the deepest of the deep has is is really coming out, you know. And uh, mm -hmm. and I think there's some kind of correlation between two things that you've uh, shared with us. One of them being um, this reemergence or uh, emergence of this collective dragon energy that you an elemental <laughs> highly elemental hadn't seen before or couldn't recall and then the other part the human part where you're talking about um you don't have to go find it you don't have to just just try saying it try play with it I mean, really think about it. It's it's either going to do one or two things or both. It's going to affirm something and you're going to go, oh yeah, that feels right. And, or it's going to release something, probably the same thing. Rather than judging it, you're just saying, like in your example, uh, I feel unlovable. I don't, or I, I feel unworthy. Uh, and just seeing how that feels. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, it's kind of like for me, like the, the old exercise of uh, through the years of pulling people up, like my mother, my father, my brother, my ex, myself, my partner, my, you know, and how does that feel today? How does that feel? And, and if you feel like, you know, well, I got work to do. Uh, I can see where this is similar, except for, it's, okay, I got work to do and let me go find it. I just say it and I just feel it. So what? I pull up this person and it makes me feel a certain way. I, I say this statement, it makes me feel a certain way. The idea is just to feel it. That's it. Just to feel it. And even if you only felt that for a few seconds, mm -hmm. if it wasn't acknowledged, it's probably still in your body somewhere. That, that's the thing. So it may not be that you always feel, you know, lost or, or whatever the word is, but 
those times, there was all the pressed as well. They all came up. I feel oppressed. I feel, sorry. <laughs> it's a bit loud. That's an exclamation point. <laughs> so that is in your body still. <laughs> Say it again. Say it again. <laughs> I feel it was like, I feel depressed, oppressed. Like all, all the pressed, all of those have, have been stored in my body. Like they all, they all came up. And I feel that everything is stored in the fascia. It's, mm. it's, you know, I've said this before, it's a connective tissue. Mm. Um, and it connects everything to everything. And I have a feeling that a lot of things that are classed as diseases in the body yeah. are actually symptoms. They're not diseases. This, this came in, some, I saw a quote from Bruce Lipton that said that cancer is not a disease, it's a symptom. And I was like, oh. And I would go so far as to say that osteoarthritis, which is something that I don't name in my body, but has been named in my body, that is not a disease, it's a symptom. And it's not wear and tear in the body, it's, um, it's fascia. It's mm -hmm. because the fascia has been contracted Mm -hmm. for long periods of time so when we go into fight flight the fascia contracts to prepare us to run or fight or it contracts in the freeze to you know keep us keep us still so we, we won't be seen um and when it's for long periods of time that's when it causes problems because it then becomes contracted for for too long yeah. and it then doesn't know how to open up and especially when it's childhood trauma and we don't know that that's there. So a lot of, a lot of this has, has been in from those times of trauma. So trauma and fear, yeah, they're, they're just so huge in the body. Well, and the, um, yeah, the, uh, I think most of us have had uh, bouts with uh, uh, inflammation is really what it mm. is. I mean, I mean, you know what I mean, uh, that constriction causes the uh, you know the the lack of flexibility and in, in the inflammation yeah. um and uh that's one of the things i would say that for me anyway because i had uh, like chronic back problems from 30 to 42 probably up into the latter part of the 40s and then i woke up and started doing a lot of walking and it kind of physically real physical physical rehabilitation occurring with spiritual rehabilitation so it's all connected but um the inflammation is has substantially dropped uh it's rare that something like uh you know something debilitating will occur and and have me you know on my back for a couple of days um uh, but um yeah there's there's something to that there's something about the lightness Mm -hmm. of being that's occurring uh i mean i'm speaking of my individual experience but i've got to believe it's 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 uh i, I feel lighter i feel my movements are less restricted um i feel like that um sometimes especially the last few weeks it you know you, you know you hear about movement and it's really good movement the walking like you're talking mm -hmm. about uh, the hiking and Tai Chi and, and you know, uh, what is it, Qi Jong? Or <laughs> Qi Gong. Qi Gong. Um, <laughs> but I'm noticing it here in the last few weeks, maybe just this month, where I'm coming into that same knowing I have when I go on a walk. I'm like, oh my God, I, feel, I, I am a God. I feel like, I'm, I feel like I could fly, you know I mean? I, it's controlled, it's just, information coming in like that you know that that you know all that heaviness is leaving you it's almost like a slow out of body experience mm -hmm. a slow near death where you start to get shot out and it's really fast and you're and you can feel the difference um but i've started to notice it uh at least for the last two three weeks in session with morgan or in communion by myself laying down and i can feel this external energy like, I guess it's me, my body, my light body or something. I can feel it all around me. And it feels like, and I've, I've only had like one or two experiences and I can't really prove them or anything, but these were way back. And, but it feels like so light that mm -hmm. I'm beginning to levitate. Yeah. 
I, and I don't know what that's about, but I know for me anyway, it's, there's something that's occurred in what you call like the fascia or the connective, the, the connect, look, it's my joints, it's my elbows, my knees and my ankles and, and they'll, they'll hurt. And I'll tell Morgan, man, it's something that energy, something's happening because I'm starting to get that same feeling. But now after a few bouts of it, I realized they're, they're the, um, it's being released. And so what I'm saying is, is that it, it's weird because as those, uh, you know, those conjoined point, uh, po points, which are full of the fascia, right? In the, in the joint, um, as they become more flexible, I become more lighter. That's that's the, that's kind of what I was uh, kind of coming to after listening to you and then putting two to, two together on my own experience. So that's a good sign. As you were speaking, I was getting that the fascia is like the foundations of the light body. It's almost where the you know like okay. the connection point. Yeah, almost like the filament in a mm. uh, in a network of lighting, right? The filament. Mm. Uh, and then I got to pull back to this session last night where I turned it off and I started talking to her. And I said, well, this is what she, why didn't you keep it? I go, well, this is what happened. Cause I couldn't explain it. But as I started explaining it, then it all came out like in perfect articulation. <laughs> but what it, the way it started was I said, I don't know how to say this, but we, and it was very much a, we, me, you, her, everyone. It was like, we are what, and I'm watching this vision of what I would have to say is prophecy, uh, but also at the same time, rewalking history um, and uh, understand and remembering and, and, and putting all the coding into one place, like the past, present, future, right? But the way it started was we were walking around in a state of the lightness of being. We were in our light bodies. So we were moving around the earth as we would move around in the physical, yet we were moving in the light body, which meant that there was still the sensation of like, it was more of a like gliding, uh, but there was still a lot of physical motions and, and, and sensations and actions, you know, that felt the same, albeit they were lighter. Um, but we were definitely in our light bodies. And so there was this imagine like a, like a, you know, like that meme straight out of Compton where they're all walking down the street, like a, a bunch of us just shoulder to shoulder, just kind of walking. And as I was looking around, some were green, some were yellow, some were red, some were blue, some were gold. You know, there was just this whole contingent of true rainbow, but <laughs> off planet <laughs> till now, kind of rainbow coalition, you know, and we were all in our light bodies. And, and, and part of that, I'm calling it prophecy for myself. Um, because that's what it came in as it was, I wouldn't say that lightly. Um, it was uh, showing me that we were, we were boundless in our, in our, um, in our experience, in our incarnation, in, in the, in our capabilities, in our desires to, you could say, travel, create, etc. And that the earth itself was boundless. And uh, and you know, just one last side note, one of the one of the real loud things in it was as we were walking, it was like we went past this uh, door or this portal. And I know I did. <laughs> I was like, hey, what's this? And I went through this portal and some other people came, it felt like, and all of a sudden I was walking on another planet. Uh with my friends and family, you know, because I remember Morgan was like standing right next to me. And I was like, hey, I remember this place. So the same thing was happening as the beginning of the vision, where we were walking on the earth and all these places we've been before, like Egypt and Atlantis and etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But and, and, and then as that was happening, I was experiencing the future, right? Like, oh, we're going to be doing this and walking back to these places and such. But then the same thing was happening when we walked, started walking on the other planet. Then all those experiences uh, started to, to be relived. And, and again, side by side, you could say the future uh, was being uh, glimpsed. You know, I was given a glimpse, right? 
so I don't know what that all means, but to me, it was like, as I, as I reflect on it now, it was like, um, even though that like in that last part, we went into another planet, it was still part of the human experience. Like there's this, like Franco used to talk about, there's a soul lineage and there's a human lineage and the human lineage. And I'm not saying this is gospel. I'm just saying, this is what came in. It, it, it became obvious to me that the human lineage was not unique to this planet. Okay. Like Lyra or other humanoid. Um, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And maybe that's where the Arcturian and the, you know, Andromedan and et cetera come in. That lady, um, that beautiful sister, Lisa M. Harrison, I'm going to try to get her husband, Darius, on pretty soon. But she's the one that came in from uh, Australia the other day, mm -hmm. the one that had been podcasting since 2009. Uh, she interviewed Lisa Renee back then and some other prominent people. Uh, she was talking about, uh, what did she call it? She called it uh, Construct. She was saying that, you know, and she has this document. It's on her channel, some videos. She's communicating. She started communicating in 2016 with this energy complex outside the Construct. And through her, her experience and, and narration, she was talking about how our galactic aspects thought they were outside of the construct, when in fact, they're in the construct with us. And that, that really made a lot of sense to me because I thought, okay, so we are, it's our turn, it's our turn up. And, and we're bringing all that with us, which is why they're helping us assisting us and have a vested interest in us because we're actually uh on point to bring it all into alignment right well thanks i didn't mean to go off on a tangent but this is uh this is cool this is the dragons and mm, yeah okay so what uh anything you want to talk about going out the door here I'm sorry I kept you an hour and 38 minutes so far. <laughs> but I don't feel like there should be a time limit. You just you just kind of go until you go. Yeah, that was an awesome vision you were just describing then. But but um I could yeah, I could feel that. I could mm -hmm. see that quite clearly as you were as you were sharing that. That was really interesting. It was, it was really powerful for me, Denise. It was mm. it was uh it was not something I really never experienced it. I'd experienced pieces of, of it, uh, like pieces of that type of uh, whatever, you know, in experience, but altogether, no. And I got to believe that it has something to do with the, I believe that about four or five days ago, for me anyway, there was a paradigm shift. And in that paradigm shift, there was a clear cut. Um, connection with fully with feminine and masculine so i believe that because of that for me anyway because i haven't had some of these elements even though i've had the ability to see and some psychic abilities um i spent too much time around morgan and women like you to know they're seeing something i'm not seeing <laughs> but that changed that mm -hmm. changed and and i think the other thing that's going to really be uh grounding i think that's why the the work that you're doing work the passion of being in the garden and creating from the the inside out the energy of of what it all is is like the feminine uh as the masculine's tapping into let's say the what we call fem, uh women's intuition that the feminine energy and all of this is tapping into the earth in a in the masculine connection because i think that's different than the feminine connection to, to Mother Earth. I've, I've seen many women talk about Mother Earth and come to tears because they are Mother Earth, right? But the masculine relation is 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 something else. It's more like the soil and the and the uh, you know what I mean, like the like building the proverbial bricks of 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 what you know what I mean. The banks of the river, as opposed to the river flowing. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Beautiful. So you're going to do, uh, tell us again what you're going to do with Zahara and who are, who were the other two, Zahara and who else? Sadia. Oh, Sadia. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, and Marion Amiel Hobbs, you've had, oh, you've had Marion on as well. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and this is going to be when and what is going to happen? We haven't got a date set yet. Okay. Um, I only asked Marion yesterday, um, but it's something dragon related. And I feel like we'll be weaving. I don't know if it will be, you know, like, like I just did, that, that was completely spontaneous with the, with the dragons before, whether it will be something like that, I'm not sure. Um, at this stage, all I have is agreement that everyone wants to do it, but we haven't like come together to, to decide how it's gonna be. So it'll be a Facebook Live and then it will be on Definitely in a piece with Denise. I haven't put any Love Speaks Loves on Heart for Living with Denise yet. Um, so I'd, I'd like for that to be next week, but as soon as we can organise it with the with the four of us, mm. um, something dragon dragon related. And I'm I'm going to be doing monthly dragon somethings. I think as well at the moment that that that's coming in that they want they want to be connected with. So, you know, like a monthly visualization or, or whatever it is with, with light language, I, I feel that, that coming in as well. That they've never been so in my face as, as they are at the moment. I think the elementals are, uh, I've heard that from quite a few people, not, not specific to dragons, but, but to the elemental community, um, how they're, what was one one sister came on a couple three weeks ago and she said um well she was talking about how there was a time and it wasn't that long ago <laughs> that in fact there are many people around the world still experience it but i mean um there was a time when they were a part of our lives um where where we had a, a working relationship um and uh and that they're they're uh i guess excited because they know that that line of communication is is coming back online and and they're ready <laughs> basically mm -hmm. look for them you know kind of a message um yeah which to me is is a is really a, profound to to contemplate because if you think about it if i think about it or maybe i'm different uh, i feel like that that is the closest part to us the closest aspect to us like that's just yesterday kind of thing you know when when i was yeah. a green man in the forest or uh, you know even a, a a grandfather rock or whatever like I, there's a lot there like look at those two rocks that you showed us there's like millions of years of, of living library, you know, to be released. We yes. think of the we think of the uh, the traumas, but if you think about, we came into this with the Akasha. We develop all this coding and through the experience mm -hmm. of of the many lives, yet it's not utilized. Mm -hmm. It's kind of stuffed away in the fascia of <laughs> all. You know what I mean? And now we've gotten to a point where we've we've uh, dissipated the traumas and and the information uh, that was you know tucked away or secreted away or hidden is coming out as a result. That's a big difference in 2023 to me. Is it's it's not just the shadow dominating our which had to happen, but I mean, it's, it's like, oh, wow. Oh, I just got to the other side and I got these new gifts, you know, or I got to the other side and you feel like something you've never felt before. Mm. Beautiful. Mm. Well, let us know when uh, that happens. And I'm excited to, uh, you know, really get this thing, uh, the community part of this out here in the next few days. Um, my understanding is by by Friday, what's today, Wednesday? Friday, um, possibly tomorrow, um, that we'll have the final blush of the final template, which is so well suited for everyone uh, in terms of navigating 
uh, you know, all those different elements of the of the store, of the marketplace, and the LinkedIn, and the YouTube, and the Facebook, etc. But especially for content creators, because the content creator literally it's like having your website, Facebook, YouTube, uh, LinkedIn, and Etsy all in one place. Um, so I'm excited about that, especially the live capability or the live potential. Uh, I believe more and more people will be using that, and uh, and I and I really like the way this one's coming coming around. So I'm anxious to show it to you and the others very quickly. Yeah, thank you for all you're doing with this. It's um, it just feels like it's coming together really, really beautifully. Well, it is. It's a little uh, my human freaks out every now and then, <laughs> but you know that's what happens. You know when we get when we get knocked, uh, you know we start to get human, and you go, "Oh my God, I need to do this and I need to do that." And, but I, I just uh, I don't fight it anymore. I don't I don't judge myself. I mean, I think we're all we're all in the same boat. We're all realizing that this all operates differently, and and I I think it's probably. I feel it's probably a bit easier for those that have been operating from the feminine intuition, primarily the women, you know, I mean, um, because they're like, man, we know how this works. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, just don't get in a hurry and, you know, but for the masculine, uh, it's actually, I think Morgan wrote that post yesterday about the, the weight of the shoulders, the weight of the world off his shoulders. It's like, wow, I don't have to do this by myself now. And that's what it feels like to me. Denise, like this whole thing. It's not me, it's not you, it's not me and Morgan, it's it's everyone. And it's becoming more and more obvious every single day. That's why once this stuff is let out of the bag in a few days and people start to go fill it up, um, I think it'll just take on a life of its own. Built, built by the community, built for the community. And of course that whole, like your garden, don't underestimate the power of one unique and equal soul doing the doing the weaving in the garden or weaving on a new platform and creating their own you know persona authentic persona yeah mm. thanks denise i am um, just just remembered so i was i when i was talking about releasing verbally for example, instead of it being an, an emotion, there was one thing I felt, I feel shackled, for example. So you might have a feeling like I feel shackled. So it's not necessarily an emotion or a, or a feeling that you're expressing. It could just be something like that. And the word that I was trying to remember that I made up was contorted. I feel contorted, which feels like contorted and like okay. compressed and twisted and I know that word. um contorted I think I've made it up no I that's a word hang on let me see is it okay uh oh I, no wait a minute yeah can uh let's see maybe not <laughs> <laughs> it is now I sure I sure I sure have seen that word assistant may not be contorted until the complaint is filed I don't know. <laughs> I thought that was a word. Contorted. It sounds like contorted, but it was definitely yeah. came out contorted. contorted. Or almost like constructed, contorted. Contorted. Well, I'm having a, uh, I'm having a uh, Mandela effect moment. <laughs> yeah. And just to go back to this, amazing, like, how is it how is it the shape it's almost like it's been in ah oh, probably was a riverbed there at some stage it's like a, it's like a a river stone mm. i feel that these and the ammonites it's like they contain stem cells because this is like original this is the building blocks of life that we have now mm. on the planet and i feel when i hold like an ammonite or these that they it's almost like the equivalent of stem cells. Like that it's, that. yeah, got the building blocks in there. Um, I like that. Um, because, like, I've been 
doing more fasting than, than I ever have, you know, over the, I don't know, last two, three months. Um, for, you know, like sometimes it's a day, half a day. Sometimes it's three days, four days. Mostly it's been like one to two days, if I want to be honest, the last few weeks. Um, but the, like the um, thing you were talking about, how it's happening in the body, like the fascia level, the cellular level, you know, all that. Um, that that comes that always comes up. And I think they talk about stem cell regeneration mm. when you fast. Um, but that seems to fit the the energetics of what's happening with us, with our energy field. <clears throat> it's like we're fasting from, you know, we're we're coming off like an like an addict. We're just, you know what I mean? We're, we're, we're uh, coming off of the, the addiction. Uh, you know, we're fasting from the distortion and the duality and the language of it and all those things. And it's creating energetic stem or allowing the energetic stem cells to regenerate. Mm. Mm. Wow. Something about the telomeres in that as well. Mm. Yeah, the telomeres. I've been intermittent fasting. I didn't really know that that was a thing. I didn't really know that what I was doing had a name and I didn't plan to do it, but where from your evening meal, you, you kind of kind of skip breakfast really. You yeah. have, or you just do it later. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've found myself doing that and then found that it had a name. <laughs> yeah, so essentially you're fasting 16 hours a day. Is what's mm. happening right um and that's i mean i can tell what like, i think the thing for me that the fasting has helped me with and this is why i can do it now like for uh, a long day like you're talking about or for a couple of days or two and a half days and and what i found is the last few times uh i'm gonna say like the last three times i'm trying to get through the eye of the needle, I guess would be the way you'd explain it. I don't really have anything in particular in my head, but what happens is when I go into that state, because it's really more of a state of being or a state of perception or state mm -hmm. of consciousness, um, everything gets really loud. Like I start to hear and see and feel my patterns of behavior mm -hmm that are, you know, one way or the other descriptively addiction uh, or addicting or habit or uh, habit. Uh, and there just seems to be like this, this higher or clearer mind, I would say, clearer mind, like, oh, that's why I do that. It's because I'm bored. <laughs> I found that out a lot, you know, oh, I go, I want to go eat because I'm bored. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so that's, but I've also found how the uh, my body doesn't want as much at all. My body won't eat. Like today, well, I had like a, I'm gonna go, you know, chill and kind of get my thoughts together. And I had, um, which, you know, if I eat a breakfast, it's what it is like two over easy eggs, uh, a quarter of an avocado slice, and a small bowl of beans. You know, and uh, and I probably won't eat the, the rest of the day. Maybe eat you know, something really small. So I think that's happening too as well. Our body just won't, our body's just going to say no. <laughs> you know, there's no argument here. It just ain't going to happen. And it's kind of a natural thing too, I think. Yeah, it's good seeing you. It's really good seeing you. And on we behalf of, too. Yeah. and on behalf of, uh, yeah, I just think we need to honor each other and recognize that we're not small and so you know all the work that you've done that i know about and that i don't know about over the years and people like you i just want to thank you on behalf of your service to humanity because um it's going to become more and more obvious that we all we all just weren't crazy <laughs> doing crazy stuff around the world so thanks thanks a lot denise thank you i feel like this so far i feel like i've i've <laughs> joined yeah. the course You're i've gone like it. Lower. You're, because you're merging think, with it. Either that or you're going to fall into a portal uh, ass backwards. <laughs> I'll see you later. This, Take care. The springs are going. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank uh, you. See y'all later. Might jump back on later, but I'll put an announcement up since we don't have notifications yet, but we'll have them soon. See y'all later. Thank you so much.